66 million years ago, Earth got blindsided by a 10-kilometer asteroid the size of Mount Everest but with worse manners, slamming into today's Yucatan. The Chicxulub crater is over 180 kilometers wide, Earth's permanent face tattoo. The impact unleashed energy equal to 100 trillion tons of TNT, over a billion Hiroshimas. Forests vaporized, oceans boiled, and dust choked the sky. Firestorms first, then a freezing, impact winter. About 75% of species vanished, except birds, who smugly inherited the planet. Ironically, Chicxulub cleared the way for mammals and us. Without it, velociraptors might still run the place. Thanks, Space Rock, you were terrible, but also our accidental wingman. But here's the thought. If one asteroid could nearly reboot life, what happens when something smaller shows up, still too big to ignore? 252 million years ago, Earth pulled the ultimate reset. The Great Dying wiped out 90% of marine life and 70% of land species. That's not a cleanup, it's nature torching the whole house. The leading culprit? The Siberian traps, eruptions flooding an area the size of the US with lava. They belched enough CO2 and methane to spike temperatures 10 to 15 degrees Celsius, acidify oceans, and choke oxygen. Seas became fish tanks with the filter unplugged. Some think an asteroid piled on too, because why not? Ecosystems collapsed, reefs dissolved, trilobites gave up, bugs the size of birds disappeared. This apocalypse cleared the stage for dinosaurs. Volcanoes set the table, Chicxulub delivered the bill, which raises a chilling thought. If lava and rocks nearly sterilized Earth once, what happens if round two comes? June 30th, 1908, Siberia. Remote, cold, and not expecting visitors. At 7.17 a.m., the sky lit up, and then, boom, an explosion flattened 2,000 square kilometers of forest, snapping 80 million trees. The culprit? A stony asteroid 50 to 60 meters wide, barreling in at 54,000 kilometers per hour. It never hit the ground, just exploded 5 to 10 kilometers up. The blast released 15 megatons of energy, 1,000 Hiroshimas. No crater, just vaporized rock and confused reindeer. People hundreds of kilometers away saw skies glowing bright enough to read newspapers at midnight. Imagine rural Russia, cabbage soup in hand, when the sky suddenly turns into a Marvel trailer. If Tunguska exploded over a city, millions die and history veers. Humanity lucked out, but the message was clear. Even small asteroids can wreck regions. Which leaves us wondering, if a tree flattener did that, what happens when the sun itself loses its temper? September 1st, 1859. The Victorian era. Top hats, telegrams, and questionable hygiene. Then the sun threw a tantrum. Astronomer Richard Carrington saw a blinding flare. And hours later, Earth was hit by the largest geomagnetic storm recorded. Auroras lit skies as far south as the Caribbean. In Colorado, miners thought it was dawn and made breakfast at 1 a.m. under a glowing green sky. Romantic if you ignored the apocalypse vibes. Telegraphs sparked, operators got shocked, wires worked unplugged. Imagine your laptop refusing to shut down because the sun decided it's IT now. If the same storm hit today, satellites, power grids, GPS, internet, all toast, trillions in damage, years to recover, and only hours of warning. The Carrington event was Earth's wake-up call, but we hit snooze, which leads to the scarier question, if the sun can fry tech on a whim, what happens when space hurls something bigger? 12,800 years ago, Earth was thawing from the Ice Age. Mammoths thrived, humans learned farming beat chasing dinner. Then, bam, the climate snapped back to near glacial for 1,200 years. One theory? A comet fragment slammed into North America near the Laurentide ice sheet. It melted vast ice sheets, flooded oceans, and shut down Earth's heat conveyor belt. Result? Instant deep freeze. Evidence includes soot layers, glass spherules, and platinum spikes, a cosmic calling card. The cold spell stalled agriculture and wiped out mammoths and saber-tooths. 
entire ecosystems unraveled because of a mid-sized rock. If something that small could derail the planet for a millennium, imagine life billions of years ago, when Earth was pummeled constantly. Four billion years ago, Earth looked like garbage, unstable crust, boiling oceans, and a sky like a lava lamp. Then came the late heavy bombardment, a few hundred million years when the inner solar system turned into a shooting gallery and Earth was the bullseye. We know this from the moon. Unlike Earth, it doesn't recycle its surface, so its craters preserve the evidence. Apollo samples show many impacts clustered 3.8 to 4.1 billion years ago, asteroids and comets going full, fast and furious. The destruction was absurd, Oceans boiled, atmospheres blasted, surfaces melted into magma seas. Hypothetically, since you'd be vaporized, you'd have seen flaming boulders non-stop. Ironically, this chaos may have delivered water and organics, seeding life's chemistry. So Earth's earliest oops session may also be why we exist. Which makes you wonder, if our planet survived cosmic dodgeball, why are we still terrified of tiny rocks? Meet Apophis, a 340-meter asteroid with a name fit for a supervillain. Discovered in 2004, it briefly had scientists sweating. Early math showed a real chance of impact in 2029. Translation, very soon. If it struck, Apophis could have unleashed hundreds of nuclear bombs worth of energy, flattening cities, triggering tsunamis, wrecking supply chains. Not extinction level, but civilization breaking. Luckily, tracking downgraded the threat. In 2029, Apophis will miss us by just 31,000 kilometers, closer than GPS satellites. It'll skim by so near you could almost wave at it if you weren't busy hiding. Still, Apophis is a warning. City-killing asteroids this size are out there, and most aren't on our radar until late. Unlike dinosaurs, we have telescopes and space agencies. The real question, will we act before the next crash pad? If asteroids are cosmic baseball bats, gamma ray bursts are sniper rifles. They release in seconds more energy than our sun in 10 billion years. That's not overkill, that's spite. They happen when massive stars collapse into black holes or neutron stars collide. The result, twin beams of radiation blasting space at nearly light speed. If one aimed at Earth, our ozone would vanish in seconds. UV rays would fry life. Some suspect a gamma-ray burst triggered the Ordovician extinction. Imagine ecosystems erased not by lava or rocks, but by invisible radiation from a star we never saw. Good news, they're rare. Bad news, no warning. One minute we're here, the next, weekend canceled forever. Which makes you wonder, if distant beams can erase worlds, what about massive stars closer? Waiting to blow. When massive stars die, they slam the door with a supernova, outshining galaxies. The explosion unleashes shockwaves, neutrinos, and radiation. Within 30 light years, Earth's ozone shreds, leaving us to cook. Betelgeuse, Orion's red supergiant, is the drama queen we're all watching. It'll explode sometime in the next 100,000 years. At 642 light years, it'll be spectacular but harmless, a second sun. But closer stars could be ticking bombs we haven't clocked. Supernovae destroy, but also create. They forge iron, gold, uranium, the ingredients for planets and people. You're basically stardust with Wi-Fi. But here's the thought. If stars can obliterate life from hundreds of light years away, what about silent monsters drifting closer? Black holes. Black holes are the universe's sinkholes, swallowing stars, planets, even light. Most sit in galactic centers like the Milky Way's beast, but some get kicked loose, drifting rogue. Picture a cosmic Roomba, except instead of dust, it vacuums solar systems. Astronomers spot them by how stars warp and wobble around invisible masses. A rogue near us could yank Earth out of orbit or spaghettify us. Unlike asteroids we track or stars we monitor, rogue black holes are invisible wild cards. No warning, no defense just cosmic ambush predators. So after fireballs, extinctions, solar tantrums, and death rays, we're left with this.
The universe doesn't need to hate us to kill us. It just has to roll the dice. Congrats. You just binge watched Earth almost dying 10 different ways. If that doesn't earn a pity like, I don't know what will. Drop a comment before Wi-Fi gets asteroid canceled and subscribe to Cosmo Binge because this channel might outlive you. Probably.